In this video, we're looking at acceleration, which is the rate of change in velocity, or put more simply, how quickly something speeds up or slows down. There are two important equations to know for acceleration, but we're going to start with this top one. On the left, we have acceleration, which is measured in meters per second squared. Then in the bottom right, we have time, and in the top right, we have the change in velocity. If you haven't seen it before, this little triangle is a delta sign, and it just means change. So delta v means change in velocity. You might also see delta v written as v minus u, where v is the final velocity, and u is the initial velocity. So by subtracting one from the other, we can find out how much the velocity has changed. For example, if it took a car 5 seconds to accelerate from 15 to 35 meters per second, then 15 meters per second would be the initial velocity, and 35 meters per second would be the final velocity. So to calculate the car's acceleration, we would find the change in velocity, which would be 35 minus 15, so 20 meters per second, and divide that by the time of 5 seconds, giving us an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared. Because acceleration is a vector quantity, like velocity is, it has direction as well as magnitude, and so it can be negative as well, which would imply that the object's slowing down or decelerating. Something else to point out is that our 4 meters per second squared acceleration is really the average acceleration over those five seconds. This is because in real life, the car's acceleration may have varied over those five seconds, rather than being four the entire time. For example, it might have accelerated lots in the first few seconds, but then accelerated more slowly during the last couple of seconds. If the car had accelerated at the same rate the entire time though, then we would call it uniform or constant acceleration. The last thing we need to cover is this second acceleration equation. We've already seen most of these letters, but now we have distance as well, which is measured in meters. If we compare this to our original equation, you can see that the main difference is that this new one includes distance instead of time. So you'll have to choose which of these to use, depending on the question. If you're given the unit of distance, then you need to use this one. But if you're given time instead, then you have to use the original one. In both cases though, something to be aware of is that if an object starts from stationary, then its initial velocity, so u, will be zero, because it's not moving. For an example, Let's imagine that a ball is dropped from an unknown height above the ground. The speed of the ball just before it hits the ground is 7 meters per second. Calculate the height from which the ball is dropped, ignoring air resistance. Now, at first, this question seems a bit impossible, because we're only given the ball's velocity at the end of its journey, so its final velocity, which is 7 meters per second. However, because it's been dropped, we can assume that it started off stationary, and so its initial velocity was 0 meters per second. Also, anything that gets dropped will accelerate downwards at 9.8 meters per second squared because of the force of gravity. So we now have v, u, and a. To find the distance though, which is s, we're going to have to rearrange by dividing both sides by 2a then all we have to do is plug in our values. So 7 squared minus 0 squared divided by 2 times 9.8, which gives us 49 divided by 19.6, which is 2.5. So the ball must have been dropped from 2.5 meters above the ground. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, 
flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.